Okay, guys. Hello, hello, hello. Um, Stephanie is being my camera person today. So, hello, Stephanie. Hello, Stephanie. Hello. So, yeah, I'm a this ghost. Is, <clears throat> excuse me. This is going to be kind of a long video. And the reason why I'm doing this, for everyone who has watched my videos for years, um, the reason why I'm doing this is thanks to Rich Lop and all of his friends. Welcome, everybody. There's been a rapid influx of subscribers. And I don't expect y'all to know or go back and watch 600 videos. So in order to catch you guys up really, really quickly, I'm going to do a video that does a very fast recap of some things so that you'll understand certain things uh, before we move on to these other videos as I go forward over the next X amount of period of time. So, first thing I want to say, though, before I start that, is, guys, when you're watching what's going on chaos-wise out there on the planet, I want you to remember one thing. It's nothing is what it seems to be. So, you're going to be looking at things like the virus and riots and this or that, and there's countless others, um, stuff going on with the Pope, all kinds of things on a very regional or local level as well as planetarily and it's going to look like people are upset or are dealing with certain issues that is not the, the case just think that all of this stuff is about frequency change it's about vibrational change and these changes will look to a human in society with your five senses and your limited verbiage that certain things are being talked about. And that's really not true. What's happening is the planet is forcing everything on the planet, specifically humans, to change the what, what frequency they are vibrating on at any given time. And these are forced changes at this point. And it's making people very, very uncomfortable. And this is playing out in a myriad of ways. But it really has nothing to do with what you're seeing. It has everything to do with vibrate, vibrational change. Okay? So try to watch things through those eyes. Instead of getting all entangled and upset about what is being said... Uh, I encourage you to understand that on a bigger level, a bigger perspective, that this is all about um, frequency changes that have to occur now. Okay, which brings up, by the way, I had one of somebody new that had never uh, watched my videos before, and she wrote, um, this has all lives matter written all over it and of course at that point I picked up that this was a very negative comment and as you know my YouTube channel is not about arguing it's my channel so I get to say what I want and you get to say what you want on your channel but I just try to keep more of interests conversations going on um, not into arguing um, I state what I have to say. You believe it or you don't. If you don't believe it, that's fine. There's, it's a big internet, huge YouTube uh, site. So you certainly are welcome to go watch whatever you want. But I don't want those kind of vibrations on my channel in any way. So, of course, I just um, blocked her and got her out. But And as you guys know, I don't watch the news. I haven't watched TV in years. And Stephanie camera person over here she's the one that just gives me an update of what's going on in areas or planetarily big picture because I, I can laugh at it right and I get caught up in the details and I don't want to because I'm too lazy for that so I don't really know specifically what's going on but I remember thinking at the time even though I didn't read the rest of her comment I remember thinking when did saying that you or a supporter of all lives. When did that become an insult? I, I think I'm missing something, and that is a rhetorical question. I don't want anybody to answer it. However, that that happened in human verbiage, where to say that all life matters on this planet, and that's an insult, 
is simply a vibratory frequency change that has to occur. But I thought it was interesting, and that's what I'm talking about with humans, that they drive uh, me crazy and they, they drive aliens crazy. As you can well know that if you had a, a bunch of beings that were saying, well, welcome and come and see us, but at the same time they were over on the other side saying, um, being very angry about a term like all life matters, you can see why they would not want to show up on our front yard, our front doorstep. I wouldn't either, because that definitely makes you wonder, well, which life does matter, and which are you willing to um, sacrifice in the course of wherever humans are at this particular time. Okay, I just thought that was interesting. Um, all lives matter is an insult. All life matters is an insult. <laughs> Very humans odd. are funny. Aren't yes, they? <laughs> they really are. I was like, oh, when did that happen? I, I am just definitely missing something. Um, I certainly do not mean to insult anybody by saying that all life on this planet matters, or really, I'll go further than that. Life matters. Period. Across the board, inside and outside this game. And if that insults some people, I, I am sorry, but I would say probably you really need to rethink. Um, what you're thinking, because uh, life should matter. You know, creation should matter of all kinds. That should not be an insult. Seriously, guys, it really should. Okay, so, now, let's go back to the beginning. First of all, I want y'all to know that I died in 2008. Uh, you can go back and watch that story if it's important to you, but um, registered nurse here uh, for 25 years. Before that, I was a uh, secretary. And so I have no history in speaking or um, uh, putting together large groups in any way, shape, or form. When I first started this channel, it was old school YouTube. I was around when YouTube first started, when people just picked up their cameras and talked. And nobody thought anybody would ever know who they really were. Uh, we couldn't even fathom that back in the day. I didn't even have a a camera that I knew how to do that with back in the original YouTube days. Uh, now I do. It's called a phone. But back then I did not, so I just watched other people. But I've never changed that that is how I see YouTube. That it's simply an avenue that we could just talk and there wouldn't be anybody that we needed to explain ourselves to or there was communication back and forth with people around the world, which I thought was absolutely amazing. So when I started doing this, it was simply because I live in Texas, northeast corner of Texas, out in the uh, country. After living in cities, I've got, got half of my life in the cities, half of it in small town country. So I've got both perspectives. And what I found is after dying, that I really didn't have anyone that I could talk to about the experience, especially deep in the Bible Belt. That certainly um, they didn't want to listen to what I had to say, let alone have the experience like me. So what I was looking for really was a friend to talk to. Never in a million quadrillion years would I have thought that there would be more than, I don't know, five, ten people that would ever listen to these, um, aside from maybe direct friends and family. Um, I didn't really think even with those numbers I would ever have those numbers, let alone what I have now. So it was never my intent to start this and become a wise teacher and guru of any way, shape, or form. I am not here to create a new religion or support or wipe out any other religions or spiritual beliefs in any way, shape, or form. Okay? I just had a very unique experience and wanted to talk about it. So I went on YouTube to actually see if I could find someone who had had a similar experience who I could talk to and share the experience with, not teach anybody, just share it with. And after years of doing this and over 600 some videos, what I found is there isn't anybody. And A couple of people that are close that you can't really yeah. talk to. No, I, I can't. There are people that have had similar, and I know where everyone went. Uh, very quickly, 
within seconds of talking to anyone that's had a near-death experience, I can tell exactly where they went when they left and when they came back. And I can also see how much they remember and how much they don't. Uh, Rich is a fine example of that. He went way further than he uh, thought he had, and he came back with a great deal more knowledge than he realized at the time we started talking. And he's becoming uh, much more aware very, very, very rapidly. Awesome guy. Um, so anyway, that's how I started all this. Uh, sitting in my travel trailer because I decided to go into a minimalist living, so I started getting rid of stuff and taking everything out of my name, and I didn't want anything. I wanted to get it down to next to nothing, that I've done all of the money, house, cars, uh, job, all that stuff. I've done all that stuff. It really didn't work for me, so I thought I'd go the other route. Uh, but I found that all that stuff took up too much of my time and money, and I didn't want to do that, so I went the other route. So when I started the YouTube videos, I was literally in a 25-foot uh, travel trailer, uh, which now has turned into about a 25-foot school bus that's been redone. But I haven't changed that much. I pretty much still stay to the don't want much stuff. And that's where I started with this whole thing. Now, then after that, what I'm going to go into is I'm going to talk to you guys about what I mean by within the game and outside of the game. And the first thing I want you all to know is that you never left Source. You can't leave Source. Source, or what I call the all that is, is everything. You are a part of it. You didn't leave it. You can't go back to it. So anytime you've got anybody talking about returning to Source or raising to Source or any of that stuff, um, from my perspective of being way outside of this game, that is, although... You can have the perspective of maybe it feels like you've left source, but in reality, you cannot leave source. And so we're going to go into next what I call the game. Those of you who've been with me since the beginning, you've seen this before, but I'm going to do it again. And uh, I'm going to give you two analogies, guys. And I know that you, the originals, you've already seen this before, but I'm going to give this to the new people to help them understand. It is a refresher course for yes. the originals. Exactly. It's a refresher course. Mm -hmm. It's like after being off for the summertime, I came back to school. <laughs> okay, the first one is my rose analogy. And when I died, and I explained this over the last two videos that I've done, the way that I'm going to explain the, the uh, what happened when I died is I want you to think of that you are sitting in front of a rose bush. That's a rose bush. Let me draw it. Rose bush. And in on this rose bush are all these roses. These are each individual roses on this rose bush, right? Okay. So we're gonna draw a arrow here. And this is one of the roses. Excellent rose. <laughs> Perfect rose. Okay, this is one single rose. It's this rose right here. And you are sitting, you're not standing, but that's the best I can do, <laughs> and your eyes are right on that rose, and that rose is right here, and every bit of you is focused, all five senses that you've got, six if you count the sixth one, are all focused on this rose right here, okay, that rose, this is that rose, and you are focused so much on this rose you can see the dew on the petals. You can see this, the, every little tiny part that's inside of it. You are spending all of your time focusing on this rose and this rose alone. That's all you're focusing on. And you are so focused on it that this is all you see is that rose. Now, when you're alive... You believe that that's all there is, that there is nothing else besides that rose. And every bit of your time, energy, your society, everything about your life convinces you that this is all there is, that this is the all that is, that there is nothing bigger, there's nothing more, there's nothing greater. Everything keeps you focused on that rose. 
the reason for that is, is because that is the game. That is the whole point of this game, is for you to only focus on this rose and be an expert on that rose. You're an expert on everything about that particular rose. Okay? So, really, I should have gotten... Oh, well. Okay. <laughs> All right, so here's your we're rose. So professional. Now we're going to go back and we're going to draw... We're going to draw the bush, honey, 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 honey. and here is your rose that you're focused on, right here. That's your rose. This is your life, everything about you, your society, everything you know. Every bit of history has to do with anything to do with this planet, the galaxies, historically in any way. Everything that you know, have heard, have experienced, is that rose. When I died, I pulled back... And all of a sudden, I not only saw this rose, but I saw more roses. And I went, whoa, this is cool. What else? So I pulled back more, and I saw the rose bush. Then I pulled back more, and I saw more bushes. Then I saw trees. Then I saw that there was a whole garden. Then it kept going, and I saw that there was a house back here, in another house. And I kept going, and I kept going. And now, here's your tiny little rose here, and I'm up to seeing the town. Then I saw the state. Then I saw the country. Then I saw the continent. Uh, continent. Then I saw the planet. Then I saw the solar system. Then I saw the galaxies. Then I saw the universe. Then I saw the multiverse. Then I saw the whole game. So, here's your rose at the beginning. And this is how far back I pulled. A lot of people will pull back and they'll only see the other roses. They'll come back after having an NDE and swear, This is all there is. There are other roses. I know about these and they're absolutely adamant. As they should be, because it is absolutely the truth. However, there are other people that pull back and they see the garden. Others pull back and see any of these different areas. They'll pull back. And that's why the stories are very different. Are any of these people inaccurate? Absolutely not. They're all completely telling you the truth. The difference is that I just kept going. It's like I got, I got rocking and rolling on this thing, and I just kept... I remember thinking, more, 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 more. And the more I said that, the faster I went. Faster, 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 faster. And I just kept going, whereas I think most people, uh, a lot of times they, they'll, they'll stop at a belief system. Like, they believe in heaven or hell. So they'll go to heaven and then come back, or they'll go to hell and then come back. Somebody will believe in Jesus or Mary or uh, Buddha and they'll see or meet that person and they'll come back. Um, some believe in uh, the aliens, so they might go so that they see those. Uh, they might see angels, they might see demons. Uh, whatever it is that they want to go to see and experience or their belief system takes them that far and then they come back. Some will come back because they, they get overwhelmed. Uh, like, uh, very frequently, they, they feel this sense of overwhelming bliss and happiness, joy, love, whatever. Lots of that that goes on. And uh, a friend of mine that's done that with ayahuasca several times, where she's gone right outside the game, and I'll explain the game in just a minute. We should get right outside the game where it was basically um, all of the duality and all of the linear time space is gone and you experience source in its all that isness at once and she kind of get it takes her breath away. In that instant she always remembers it. She knows everything. Knows everything about everything. But then it's like <gasps> and then in that <gasps> she'll come rushing back the other direction. Now, the difference is that I never, I didn't do that for a very, very long time. Okay? So, now, starting with the second one, now we're going into the next one. Now, we, we're at fourth dimension. We're on the edge of fourth dimension. Now, we're going to go into fifth dimension. So, 
because I've talked to you about what actually is 1 and 2D, even though you can't understand it, the third dimension, which is where most of you spent the majority of your lives. Then there was this movement from 3D to 4D. And all of you who are listening to the sound of my voice right now have already gone from the third dimension into the fourth dimension. At times, you can go back and forth between these dimensions in the space of a breath. It's all a vibrational thing. And people ask me, they say, well, when will we know when we go from four to five? You didn't notice when you went from three to four. The same thing is true. The same thing I would say to you is, well, give me a date and a time of when you went from childhood to adulthood. Right, real quick, like, where was that door? Where was that gate? Where was preteen to, from teen to preteen? Preteen to teen. Where was young adult to, um, oh, I don't know, older adult? Medium adult? You see what I'm saying? It isn't like that. It's much uh, more subtle. So, this three to fourth dimension that you've already done, and the majority of you, if you're listening to me, the chances are you are four score, 100%. Or at least, I would say, an easy 95% of the time and up, you are in the fourth dimension. Now you're moving through the, the fourth dimension. Now, the big thing about this particular game, and I'll completely explain the game in a minute. The big deal right this second about this particular game is in human form, in human form, no being has ever gone from the low levels, low levels of the third dimension to the fifth dimension ever, ever. It's never been done. It's not that there aren't humanoids or humans in the fifth dimension as we speak. There are plenty of them. But there is no one standing in the fifth dimension right now that was in physical form in one human lifetime of the lower dimensions of the third dimension. These are very low frequencies, very low frequencies. No one even thought about trying to do from low 3D to 5D on any level in one human lifetime. Usually this kind of vibrational change, it takes thousands and thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of lifetimes to make this shift, okay? No, you do not have to die to get to the fifth dimension. You didn't die when you went from three to fourth dimension, and you're not going to die from going from fourth to fifth. Any star seed that is in fourth dimension and dies will not come back into the game to get to the fifth dimension. You will not come back into the game. You will be outside of the game in another game. All right. So let's go back and explain analogy number two, where I explain to you what I mean by the game. When I was backing up, doing the analogy Rose to Multiverse, when I did that, there was a point where I saw the beginning of this creation. This creation, let me do it like this. You look up at the stars in the sky. I want you to look up at the sky. Let's look up the stars in the sky. How many of them there are? And you know that you can't even begin to see all of them with your human eyes that you know exist. So I want you to not only look at all of the stars in the sky or even sands on the beach, every sand that you can imagine on every beach in every desert that you can imagine. Think that big, okay? Now I want you to take one of those stars. Pick one. I don't care whichever one it is. That one star out of all the stars in the sky, all the sand on the planet, one is this game. Okay, what do I mean by this game? Okay, all of those other pieces of sand, all those other stars in the sky are other games that have been created by other gods just like you. You have created them. You've created many of them. Uh, it's no big deal. That's what we do. We create, we experience, we create, we experience, we create, and invite others to come and experience and create with us. That's what we've always done. That's what we will always do. We have always been and we will always be. There is no new soul, old soul. There may be a new 
you may have a, you may be newer to this particular game, which I am very very new, never been here before, won't be back, or you might be an old player of the game, what I call uh, Star Seed. I call myself Star Seed. Probably doesn't match other people's version of Star Seed, but that is what I call me. I've never been in this game uh, other than this particular lifetime. My ex-husband Stephanie's father is long, long, long-term human. He's even more than that. He's a long-term player of the game. He was playing this game before there was even a thing called humanity. Okay? So, now that you know that every star in the sky, every grain of, 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 grain of sand is a different game, and this is just one of them. Just one. Now, what happens is when uh, uh, one of us, part of all it is, one of us many gods, when we come up with an idea, um, oh, that's what I was telling a friend of mine, I was saying it's kind of like, think Legos. There's like an endless supply of Leg Legos of many, many awesome, you can have anything you want. And you like take all the red Legos, red Legos, and yellow egg Legos of this of a certain size, like, I don't know how to do this, like four to six dot Legos. Legos. Okay, so this is, you take, it's not like you don't have everything to choose from, you do. But you've decided, because you're going to make this new game, you're going to build a new house out of Legos, and you've decided that you're just going to use red and yellow Legos that are four to six dots. So you take all the red, yellow, and four to six dot Legos. All the rest of the Legos are still there, but you just